Hi, I'm Catherine Caroli, and I'd like to talk about preparing Daphne and Chloe for a flute audition. This is such a beautiful excerpt, but requires so much control on the part of the flute player. Let's start off by talking about the opening scale. I can't tell you how many times I've had the scale fail on me early in my auditioning days, and there's no worse way to start out this excerpt than having the scale fall apart. So I highly recommend that you practice the scale with all sorts of une uneven rhythms and movable fermatas much more than you think. I like to think of a little tenuto on the first note and then a gradual diminuendo with a tiny bit of time setting the high G sharp. something like that, so that you approach the G sharp from a piano almost into, a, I'm thinking pianissimo on the high G sharp. It's really hard to control these next notes, playing high and soft. I find something that's really helpful is overblowing the low note fingerings and playing harmonics. It can sound very ugly and it almost doesn't even matter if you're getting the right partial out. Just the fact of creating more resistance in your lips will help build muscle memory and better control. When I go to play with regular fingering, it feels a lot freer and more easy. Now in terms of the timing, I like to think of stretching on every fourth eighth note, um, except when there are the really fast notes. So I'll play the first half and then you can kind of hear where I think it's appropriate to stretch. It's also really important to keep the vibrato narrow enough that it's not wobbly, so really inside of the sound. Stay within a pianissimo realm. And on these two places where you have the 16th and then the dotted eighth, they should sort of feel like it's almost like a dramatic operatic catch breath. So don't cut off the first note too short, but make sure that you have a little bit of length and then a super quick breath. in one, two, three, four, five measures before 177. I am quite free. I start a little bit slower on the first group of three and then sort of fall into the following downbeat. But then I like to take time into the second measure before 177. Now keep in mind that orchestra has a general crescendo in the bar before 177 and at 177, but it's not written in the flute part. I don't mind flute players get a little bit louder on that C sharp, but there shouldn't be an overt clear crescendo. The next section is marked mezzo forte. So this should definitely be a dynamic level or two more than how you've played before. It's super easy to be out of tune on all the C sharps and the Bs. You have so many times where you're playing a B, another note, and then a B, or a C sharp, another note. So I like to put a drone tuner on a B and check all my Bs with it, and then on a C sharp and check all my C sharps with it. Um, it's a, sort of a tradition on the, the fourth bar of 177 to lightly tongue all those notes and to make a sort of subito piano. And to make that convincing, I do a little crescendo before that. Um, the Bs shouldn't be too aggressive. I think with the dot and the tenuto, the idea is that they're sort of long and pushed. And then I do think it's appropriate to make an acello rondo into the top B. This B is really the forte high point of the whole solo. And it's important to stay forte through that whole measure. So I'll just play up to there.
hopefully you got the sense of the, the fullness and the richness that I arrived in that forte measure with. Um, and then going on from there, I think it's important to not slow down here too early. It's written in three bars before 178. But keep in mind that retard that starts there has to continue to gradually get slower all the way into 178. I also like to think of two bars, two bars before 178 as another sort of catch breath place. So I will play that tied first eighth note very long and take a quick breath, repeated, uh, and then repeating the, the A sharp. The rallentando into 178 should be enormous, in my opinion, and then as soft as possible 178. Too often flute players forget that they're back up to a quicker tempo in 178 and then run out of breath. I think it's important to breathe in the second bar of 178 and then ideally not again until a quick breath on the downbeat of 179. The forte in third measure of 178 is really on the second eighth note, so it's important to make that obvious. And then think about everything from the third bar, third eighth note of 178 until 179 as a free sort of cadenza. should happen. So from pianissimo, crescendo, all the way to fortissimo with an accent on the E sharp. Not tongued, but accented. So I hope this is helpful in terms of your preparation, and I hope eventually that you can get to a point where you really enjoy playing the solo. I think it's probably the most rewarding solo to play with the orchestra because you have so much freedom and so much flexibility, and you're not competing to project your sound at any point. So you've really got everything at your disposal. Um, please let me know if you have any questions or any comments or would like me to do a tutorial on anything else. Catherine Caroli at gmail.com. Thanks so much.